Welcome back to the channel, folks. In this entry, we'll be taking a look at Henry Evans from The Good Son. Henry is a chilling depiction of a child with antisocial traits, one that is improbable but still possible to exist in the real world, an enigma of evil that baffles psychologists to this day regarding its source. As we see with Henry's case, one can grow up in a relatively normal environment and still turn out on the wrong side of morality. Henry appears to be nothing more than a typical boy of his age at the start of the film, with some notable instances of mischief and a snarky attitude. This innocuous impression, however, is quickly replaced by one of horror and repugnance, as Henry starts displaying devious behavior that is worthy of those with a life sentence. Quite fittingly, perhaps the Michael Myers-type mask which he dons in his debut appearance served as a visual foreshadow of the evil within. The first sign of a cause for concern would be Henry's disregard for the safety of others, combined with a lack of normally occurring empathy for the emotions of others. When Mark loses his footing on the treehouse, Henry is content to let him hang there at his mercy, and while Mark is petrified for his life, Henry shows zero trace of the same emotion, even taunting him with the question of whether he can fly if he lets go. At this point, Henry has no reason to be hostile to Mark, which drives home the point that this apathy towards his safety stems from something within himself. It might even be said that Henry has difficulty processing and displaying his own emotions, as throughout the film he displays a very limited range of them, with feelings such as fear, anger, and sadness often being elusive to him. Even in situations that might pose a risk to his safety, Henry displays a remarkable level of calmness, such as his unflinching attitude as he stands within inches of the hostile guard dog, and even at the end, when his life was hanging in the balance, he appears to be far more calm than his mother or even Mark. Perhaps the most apparent instance of Henry's lack of emotion lies in the moment when he brings up the passing of Mark's mother. Asking him if he cried during her funeral as he practices an act of grief while shedding fake tears. In his own words, I figure you're expected to cry at your mum's funeral, a sentence which again exposes that he is devoid of empathy and emotional development. He's cognizant of what is deemed as a normative human response in such a scenario, but he cannot find those underlying emotions within himself and therefore has to resort to putting on an artificial display. Thus far, if an adult had displayed the current scope of behavior that we've seen of Henry, they would be labeled with antisocial personality disorder, or ASPD in short. From a biological standpoint, this disorder has been attributed to a person having less gray matter in the limbic system of their brain in addition to a sub-functional amygdala, both of which result in the lack of emotional development. But given that Henry is still a child, for ethical reasons it's not quite appropriate to label him with ASPD or as a sociopath. The more suitable term would be conduct disorder, or labeling him as having callous and unemotional traits. A child with these attributes isn't necessarily doomed to become a sociopath and can still develop into a mentally sound adult, especially if the cause of the callousness is a traumatic environment and they somehow manage to be free of it. These callous traits exist on a spectrum, and we all exhibit some small manner of them at times, but in Henry's case, he appears to be on the deep end of it frequently. Another symptom of these traits comes in the form of his breaking of rules and social norms, such as his underage smoking, as well as his construction of a crossbow, a lethal projectile weapon that is just about one step below an actual firearm. Henry's defiant nature and disregard for rules is heard in his own words, in the phrase where he tells Mark, you can do anything, signaling that nothing his mind can conceive is beyond the scope of his actions. Of course, most egregious of all, Henry's callousness is apparent in his cavalier attitude towards death. On the lighter scale, this is seen in his treatment of animals, in his intention to kill the cat, 
and in his subsequent kill of the guard dog. While Mark is shocked by the act and reeling in guilt, Henry plays along for a while, but his facade is exposed by his insensitively joyful humming after disposing of the carcass. On a more grim and alarming scale, Henry's callousness is also evident in the context of human death, highlighted when he brings up the topic of Mark's mother and nonchalantly describes her demise as merely scientific. Cold and emotionless as per what we've come to expect, an approach that is repeated when he goes on to describe his brother Richard's corpse. Being indifferent to the concept of death is abnormal enough, but having homicidal tendencies is another cause for concern altogether. And it's one thing when it's aimed at strangers, such as the prank of Mr. Highway, which could easily have racked up a sizable casualty count. But it's most disturbing when these homicidal tendencies are aimed at the people of your own household, all while displaying the same level of emotional blankness that has come to characterize him. At my first impression, it seemed that the reason Henry killed Richard was perhaps because Richard was the favored son, a younger offspring who diverted the attention away from a jealous elder brother. This appeared to be supported by Henry's statement to his mother after he was found out for depriving her of the rubber duck, which is an object of her affection held in remembrance of her deceased son. In reference to the rubber duck, Henry tells his mother it was mine before it was his, perhaps suggesting a hint of jealousy and resentment that his mother's affection that was once his had been seized by his younger brother. But this jealousy for affection is unlikely to be the most plausible explanation, as apart from his father, we find that Henry has made attempts on all his family, his sister and even his mother included. Given his callous traits and his lack of emotional development, it's unlikely that Henry would have forged a meaningful bond with them to desire affection in the first place. The answer probably leans more towards just a general disregard for human life, combined with an emotional apathy that permits such behavior whenever the slightest offense arises. With his mother, perhaps it's a vying for attention and not so much affection, with the offense being that his mother and Mark were starting to get closer. If he can't have her, then no one can, and her demise would be a kill of two birds with one stone, traumatizing Mark as well. With his sister, it's possible that his attempt on her simply arose out of irritation and from finding her to be an annoyance, someone who infringed on his rules and boundaries, such as going into his room. Of course, in both cases, the supposed offense is trivial but Henry sees no issue in punishing them by death. Then there's also the strong possibility that he's simply doing it because he likes it. None of his acts were impulsive. All of them were thought out and premeditated. Due to his callous nature from the anomalies in his brain, Henry might not even be aware that what he is doing is wrong. Even if he does, it's from a cognitive standpoint without the crucial component of the emotional weight. Everyone knows murder is heinous, but it's because we foresee its impact emotionally that we don't entertain the thought. With all that said, we come back once again to the origin of Henry's callousness. In the words of Mark's therapist concerning the subject of evil, there's a reason for everything if we could just find it, to which Mark replies, what if something just is? Perhaps this might be a concise way to describe the evil of Henry Evans. A person with ASPD or callous traits like Henry generally has their personality arising from anomalies in the brain as previously discussed, or traumatic circumstances from an abusive childhood that shaped them to be social misfits. With Henry's case, it's unlikely that his callous traits originate from an abusive background, as his family situation appears to be quite stable and hardly resembling that of the commonly dysfunctional one. Which rings an unpleasant truth, that sometimes the parents can do everything right but still end up with a child bearing conduct disorder. As unsatisfying as it sounds, the only factor left would be simply that Henry was just born this way. 
an unfortunate result of the genetic lottery producing a devious child inclined to evil. It's possible that if given the right treatment, Henry might be able to live a life that somewhat resembles that of a normal person. Although for his case, his callousness is quite high on the scale and the prognosis doesn't appear too positive. He remains manipulative to the end, professing a false declaration of love to his mother in an attempt to save himself, a declaration that proves utterly absurd given his earlier attempt on her life. As fate would have it, only one child could be saved, and Henry is sent plummeting down the edge, a final recompense for his misdeeds, with the last remaining vestige of his evil washed away by the waves. A callous and unemotional child with an absence of morality and no regard for the well-being of others, the disturbing case of Henry Evans is a horrific testament that sometimes evil isn't made. It's born.